Hey guys, my name is Cornel here, and today we're going to be going over NAT type and just how to uh, improve just your internet um, as a whole, especially for gamers here uh, and creators. So as you can see, this is the second recording of this video. I muted my mic the first time. So I'm just going to go and run through this really quickly for you guys and provide you guys some value here. So NAT type is just network address uh, translation. So you don't have to know what that means. All you have to know is that there's three NAT types. There's strict which is basically your computer or your gaming console um, doesn't have direct uh, incoming connection to a lot of things uh, past just your home network or your router. Um, there is moderate where this is in a situation where um, you kind of have access, but for example, if you're uh, double natting, if you're playing Call of Duty, but your brother also has a PlayStation that plays Call of Duty, you guys are fighting for that same 13074 port. Um, so basically, that is what's called just, that's what's called um, just being in a moderate. A double nat. Uh, refers to when you have something like two routers connected to each other, but you didn't um, go ahead and disable NAT uh, from one of the routers. So basically, both of them have NAT enabled and both of them are double NATing. Uh, so it's pretty easy. So an open is when you are good to go. You have access to all the ports that you need um, just for that particular uh, game or service here. Uh, so let's go through how to fix this. So the number one thing uh, that a lot of people don't think about is basically restarting your router. When was the last time you restarted your router? Tell the truth here. The last time you probably restarted your router was due to a power outage, uh, a hurricane, or some kind of uh, national um, like crisis that was going on in your neighborhood here. So basically what I would suggest is restarting your router at least like once a month. Uh, that way it can go ahead and just rest up for a minute. doesn't need rest, but basically uh, it's going to just reset itself a little bit uh, and get back up to par with its natural performance. So um, what happens to routers a lot of the time is that a lot of devices pile up on your router over time. This could be due to guests, neighbors, um, etc. So what you want to do is keep making sure that your device list on your router is small. You don't want everybody to know your Wi-Fi password. Uh, personally, what I do is I named my Wi-Fi HP printer, um, and that way nobody connects to it because nobody likes printers. Um, so the second way is basically opening your NAT type. So how do you open your NAT type? There's three ways. There is going to be uh, UPnP, which is universal plug and play. There's port forwarding, and there's DMZ, which is demilitarized zone. So a lot of people know about port forwarding, but a lot of people get this wrong here, so pay attention. So number one, the number one way is just going on your router, checking to see if UPnP is enabled. You, what is UPnP? Universal plug and play? That is port forwarding automatically on your router. A lot of people, a lot of YouTube videos don't discuss this with you because I think they're just reading port forwarding, but... UPnP is already enabled on most routers, and that is good enough for port forwarding unless it's a specific port that your UPnP does not um, does not take into account. Now, let's say UP UPnP does not work for you. You have a brother. He's always on the game first. He gets back from school early, so he's on every day first on Call of Duty, and you always have a moderate NAT. So focus on you, King. Focus on you. So what you have to do is this. Um, you go into your router. Let me show you how to get into your router real quick. And you have to assign that port to be open only on your device here. Uh, so this is how you do it. So you're going to right click on just this um, computer here. You're going to open network settings. You're going to go to change uh, adapter options. You're going to click on the Ethernet or the Wi-Fi you're connected to, whichever adapter it is. You're going to right click, you're going to click status, you're going to click details. Then you're going to um, see that you have an IPv4 address. That's the address of the PC that you're on or the game console that you're on. You're going to see that you have a default gateway address. That's the address of your router. What you have to do is type this in Google, Chrome, or whatever browser that you use, and you'll see your router login. From there, if you don't know your router login, check the back of your router if it's a default one. Um, it is usually not your Wi-Fi uh, username or password. 
So just check the back of it or just check whatever app you use to set it up in or whatever password that you provided to it. And that's how you get into your router and change all of this stuff. So let me continue. So you have a brother that plays Call of Duty all the time, but you want to open that. You want um, to join your friends. Uh, so basically, you would go into your router. You would open just the 3074 port specifically for this IPv4 address, which is your PC or your game console here. Um, and what this does is it basically allows you to always have that 3074 port and your brother, uh, not going to make it. Uh, he, he can stick with a modder. He doesn't need it. Um, so that is when you use port 40 and when it's valuable or when UPnP doesn't, um, doesn't allow, uh, whatever port that you are trying to get to, but most UPnPs work perfectly fine for the average user. So now then there's the danger zone. This is the danger zone. This is DMZ, demilitarized zone. They wouldn't call it militarized zone if you weren't supposed to be doing this. You only do this if you're on a game console. Do not do this if you're on a PC. You're going to get your Bitcoin stolen. You're going to get a 401k, your chase, anything that you got, it's going to be gone. Uh, basically, what you do this for is DMZ is opening your connection to the whole entire internet. I wouldn't suggest this, but on game consoles, which sometimes can't get access to some specific ports, uh, this can be helpful. On PCs, never do this. Never, ever, ever, ever do this. No matter if it's a gaming PC or what, do never do this because this leaves you very vulnerable. I mean, seriously vulnerable. This is the worst thing that you could probably do. Um, so that DMZ just allows for incoming traffic. So summary, UPnP, automatic port forwarding, don't have to touch anything, got, just gotta make sure it's on. You have port forwarding, that brother, focus on you, king or queen. Make sure that you get to open that and he doesn't stick him to moderate. That's when you use port forwarding. And number three, game console here. Um, DMZ, demilitarized zone. Do not do this unless you have a game console only. Opening your internet to the entire, inter I mean, internet, basically. Um, so I generally will not suggest the last one unless you are very desperate. Um, so gamers, how can you improve just your connection overall? How can you improve your bullet registration? How can you decrease your latency? So there's a few things that I feel like gamers miss a lot here. So we're going to go to that. Number, number one, understanding the importance of download versus upload. Upload to FPS gamers should mean the world. When you send out a bullet, when you are playing an FPS game and you are sending out your bullets, you are sending something out. That is your upload. When you are downloading something, you're bringing something in. So think of your internet like a highway, right? If you're sending your bullet registration out and gamers, not, games aren't that intensive, then that should be perfectly fine. But what happens when the highway gets very, very clogged here? It's something called buffer bloat, and that is the worst. So where do buffer bloat come from? All those devices, all those cousins that came over, all those neighbors that asked you for the Wi-Fi password, um, you not having your Wi-Fi with a password on it in general, that's where all your buffer bloat com comes from, and that's why your bullets are delayed and why your game feels delayed in general. Um, now there's another thing. A lot of people have cameras. Now cameras can be very intensive. If you don't set them up correctly, if you have cameras that auto upload to the cloud, what I would suggest is making sure that you put an upload limit on it. Uh, it doesn't matter how fast it uploads to the cloud. As long as it's on the cloud, you don't have to have your cameras blasting at your upload when your UPS driver shows up and you're in the middle of a 1v1 gunfight and you lose it because your UPS driver showed up. You don't want that to happen. So that's a hidden thing that a lot of gamers face. Another thing is streaming. Uh, one thing that you could do regarding if you stream in game is set a, setting up just a, a QoS system if you have a lot of devices in your house. That way you can prioritize your game over everything else and then 
you can kind of have an express lane for your traffic while everybody else is stuck in traffic. Um, so that is one benefit of just getting gaming routers or high tier routers here. Um, the last thing is um, multiple, this is not the last thing, multiple devices on your network. Restart your router. I'm telling you, remove, clear scan all those devices on your router when you do the poor forwarding. You want to be able to do this. You don't want your cousin coming over, uh, uploading their YouTube video or something like that while you're gaming in a very, very important game in a 1v1. You want to make sure that you are basically the only one uh, on just the network when you game. That's 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 optimal. Um, updating network drivers. So the way you do this is all you would have to do is go to um, start system information, type in that. You go to baseboard products. Uh, now, this is my motherboard. I would copy that, paste that in Google, go to the support, go to drivers on my motherboard, and then download the network driver, and boom, I have the updated network driver, which will provide me uh, better um, performance in general. Not all the time, but it does, usually. Um, and the last thing is just watch out for like any kind of bloatware apps that's running in the background that's trying to... Um, optimize just your internet in general. Uh, a lot of them create a buffer bloat without realizing it. I feel like these are some of these are made by people that just don't game, so they don't understand just how to use like QoS effectively for a gamer. So I would stay away from this. I would uh, remove them if you can. Killer app is like one of them. Um, so I would highly, highly suggest staying away. So I hope this helps, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day here. And let me know if. I can do any other tips or tricks for you here. So have a wonderful rest of your day.